in the vast universe of human thought, few stars shine as brightly as the law. It governs our actions and shapes our societies. But where did this celestial body of rules and principles come from? The historical school of thought in jurisprudence offers a captivating answer. It argues that law is not a static, unchanging entity. Instead, it is a product of a long, intricate process of historical and cultural development. Like a tree, law has roots that reach deep into the soil of the past. To understand its present form, we must unearth its hidden origins. The historical school invites us on a journey through time. It urges us to trace the evolution of legal systems. We can then see how they have been molded by the hands of custom, tradition, and the unique circumstances of different societies. This school of thought rejects the idea of universal legal principles. It argues that law is not a one-size-fits-all garment. It is a tailored suit stitched together by the threads of history and culture. Imagine a plant reaching for sunlight, constantly adapting to its environment. The historical school sees law in a similar light. It is not a rigid, unchanging structure. It is a living, breathing entity that evolves alongside society. Just as a plant's growth is, be, is, is influenced by soil, water, and sunlight, law is shaped by social, economic, and political forces. This organic view of law stands in stark contrast to theories that portray it as a product of pure reason or divine decree. The historical school reminds us that law is deeply intertwined with the fabric of society. It is not imposed from above, but emerges from the lived experiences and shared values of a people. As societies change, their legal systems naturally adapt and transform. This dynamic relationship between law and society is central to the historical school's perspective. It highlights the importance of understanding the historical context in which laws are created and enforced. Laws are not abstract principles detached from reality. They are practical tools that societies develop to regulate their affairs and address their unique challenges. One of the most evocative concepts within the historical school is that of the Volksgeist. Coined by German jurist Friedrich Karl von Savigny, Volksgeist translates to the spirit of the people. It represents the shared values, beliefs, customs, and traditions that bind a community together. Savigny argued that law is not simply a collection of rules but a reflection of a nation's Volksgeist. Just as language, art, and literature express a people's unique identity, so too does their legal system. The Volksgeist shapes the content of laws, the way they are interpreted, and the manner in which they are enforced. This emphasis on the Volksgeist highlights the cultural specificity of law. What is considered just and equitable in one society might be viewed as unacceptable in another. The historical school urges us to appreciate these differences and to understand legal systems within their cultural contexts. It cautions against imposing external legal norms on societies with different historical experiences and cultural values. The historical school views law as an unfolding tapestry woven together over centuries. Each generation adds its own threads building upon the work of those who came before. To comprehend the intricacies of this tapestry, we must trace the historical journey of law, exploring the forces that have shaped its development. This journey takes us back to ancient civilizations, where we encounter the earliest forms of law, often intertwined with religious beliefs and customs. We witness the rise of codified law in ancient Rome, the influence of canon law in medieval Europe, and the emergence of common law in England. Through this historical lens, we begin to appreciate the evolutionary nature of law. We see how legal principles have emerged, transformed, and sometimes been discarded as societies have grappled with new challenges and evolving moral sensibilities. 
The historical school reminds us that law is not static. It is a continuous process of adaptation and growth. Section 5, no one size fits all, rejecting universal law. The historical school stands in direct opposition to the concept of universal law. Proponents of universal law argue that there are fundamental principles of justice that transcend time and culture. These principles, they believe, should form the basis of all legal systems. The historical school challenges this notion. It argues that what is considered just and fair is not fixed or absolute. It varies significantly across cultures and historical periods. Imposing a single set of legal principles on all societies, they argue, would be both impractical and unjust. Instead of seeking a universal legal blueprint, the historical school emphasizes the need for context-specific laws. Each society with its unique history, cultural values, and social structures should develop legal systems that are tailored to its specific needs and circumstances. This approach, they believe, is more likely to result in laws that are seen as legitimate and are therefore more likely to be obeyed. Section 6, From Custom to Code, the power of tradition. Central to the historical school's perspective is the recognition of custom as a primary source of law. Long before written laws were etched in stone or recorded on parchment, human societies were customs and traditions. These customs passed down through generations served as the bedrock of social order. The historical school argues that many written, written laws are simply formal expressions of pre-existing customs. They are codifications of norms and practices that have already gained acceptance within a community. Even today, custom continues to play a crucial role in shaping legal systems, influencing the interpretation of statutes and the development of case law. The emphasis on custom underscores the importance of understanding the historical and cultural context of law. Customs often reflect deeply held values and beliefs, and they provide insights into communities and the community's understanding of justice and fairness. By studying customs, we gain a deeper appreciation for the spirit and rationale behind the law. Uh, Section 7, Titans of Thought, Savigny and Maine. The historical school of thought boasts a constellation of brilliant legal minds, but two stars shine particularly bright, Friedrich Karl von Savigny and Sir Henry Maine. Their profound contributions have shaped our understanding of law's historical and cultural dimensions. Savigny, considered the founder of the historical school, championed the idea of the Volksgeist. He argued against the imposition of codified law based on abstract principles, believing it would stifle the organic development of law rooted in a nation spirit. His work emphasized the importance of studying Roman law, not as a universal model, but for its historical significance in shaping European legal systems. Sir Henry Maine, a British jurist, focused on the evolution of legal systems. From status to contract, he argued that in early societies, an individual's legal rights and obligations were largely determined by their social status. As societies progressed, contract law became increasingly important, allowing individuals greater autonomy in shaping their legal relationships. Maine's work highlighted the dynamic nature of law and its responsiveness to social and economic changes. Section 8, Enduring Strengths, Cultural Relevance and Organic Growth. Despite facing criticisms, the historical school's legacy in legal thought remains significant. Its enduring strengths lie in its emphasis on cultural relevance and the organic development of law. By recognizing the cultural specificity of law, 
the historical school encourages a more nuanced and respectful approach to legal pluralism. It acknowledges that different societies may have different conceptions of justice and fairness, and it cautions against the imposition of external legal norms without considering local contexts. Furthermore, the historical school's emphasis on organic legal development resonates with the reality of how legal systems evolve. Laws rarely emerge fully formed from the minds of legislators. They are often the product of a gradual process of adaptation responding to changing social norms, economic realities, and political pressures. The historical school's focus on this evolutionary process provides valuable insights into the dynamics of legal change. Section 9, Facing the Critics. Resistance, Relevance, and Exclusivity. While the historical school offers valuable insights, it has not escaped criticism. Detractors point to its potential to stifle progress, its relevance in modern, diverse societies, and its potential for cultural exclusivity. One criticism is that by emphasizing the historical and cultural rootedness of law, the historical school may create a bias towards the status quo, making it resistant to necessary legal reforms. Critics argue that clinging too tightly to tradition might hinder progress and perpetuate injustices embedded in outdated laws and customs. Another challenge lies in applying the historical school's principles to increasingly diverse and multicultural societies. In a world where individuals often identify with multiple cultural backgrounds, determining a single folk guise that reflects the values of all members of a society can be complex and potentially exclusionary. Finally, critics argue that the emphasis on cultural specificity might be used to justify discriminatory practices or human rights violations in the name of preserving tradition. They caution that while cultural context is essential, it should not be used as a shield to protect unjust or harmful practices.